We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Oh, uh, we're coping, Jared. We're coping, but we're here. How are you doing? Yeah. Once again, I really shouldn't have even asked you that, but it's just what I say at the top of the show, and I can't, I can't not do it. Yeah, welcome to the dead, Kyle. How are you doing today? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we got we got through that episode. We got through our um, Scarlet and Grade episode. Fs. Uh, Fs listen? were handed out. <laughs> lots of Fs. Yes, lots of Fs. <laughs> All right, but we're going to talk about uh, the our collegiate chaos games here, and boy, Team Chaos took many souls this weekend, Jared. Not just Ohio State. That's not chaos. Many others. Just many, it's, many, it's, many. Ought. It's two. It's two versus three. It's not technically a chaos. Just going to toss that out there. Yeah, yeah, but it's the way they lost. But either way, not going to get. We're not. We're going. We're not going to uh, dive deep deep back into that again here. So either way, let's, let's, let's go right into it. We're, we're just going to go in order of where they were ranked in the previous week here. And we'll just go down the line here. So we'll start with Georgia, uh, struggled a little bit in the first half, but in Georgia fashion, what we've seen all year, Jared. Yep. They find their, they finally decided to play football and take care of business against uh, Georgia tech. Yeah. Uh, Georgia looks super beatable right now. Everyone, no one in college football is great. Nope. That that or everybody's kind of good. I don't know if the. I don't know if like the transfer portal is is starting to it's the former Jared. We might just because of the transfer portal, we might just be seeing a bit more parody in college football. I mean, or maybe just everyone sucks. Um I don't know the answer to that yet. I don't think it's fair or even possible to say that at this point. Uh, that's a thing we'll have to re-examine in a couple years. Yep. But also the transfer portal also leads to everyone sucking. Because all of a sudden you can't afford, you're not as deep as you once were. And because you're losing your backups to the transfer portal. Um, we might be getting more parity in college football. So it might be both. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Let's next game. TCU uh, did not have issues with Iowa state <laughs> 62 to 14 in that game. Jared. Yeah. We've been asking TCU to win a, win a, a game big all year. And, and finally they did uh, the second time for the second time, but you know, against the team that they should have absolutely decimated and they finally did it. So that's All right. really helping their case for a playoff spot, but um, maybe wasn't even needed based off of all the chaos that happened this week. Yeah. And uh, who didn't help their case with their, uh, with their playoff shot and pretty much eliminated them. LSU losing to a really bad Texas A&M team, 38 to 23. Yeah. Um, Texas A&M's happened. playing, Texas A&M's playing better. Um, given all the young players that they were playing this year, it kind of makes sense that they would just sort of improve as the year went on. The, yeah, again, they're Jim, playing Jim Jimbo saved his job. No, no, he didn't. Yeah, <laughs> but by which I mean they couldn't afford to pay him out. Exactly. Um, probably the second biggest game of the weekend here, uh, USC and Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame was hoping to, to play spoils here, but USC takes care of business and beats Notre Dame 38 to 27. Yeah. Um, Kyle, a couple of weeks ago, we said if USC wins out, they're in because they have an incredibly hard and incredibly tough road to hoe. And yep. they've they're doing it. They're two they're they two are. games into that three game stretch that we said they needed to win out, and they're doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, yeah, they beat they beat UCLA. Now Notre Dame. Yes, now they're looking Austin, for their Utah. Now they're, now, now they're looking for their revenge against Utah here, which I believe, if I'm looking at the early Vegas odds, just a two and a half point favorite for the Trojans. <laughs> but if you if you go of any um predictor here like i'm looking on the one on espn real quick 
they have Utah in their matchup um, project pre predictor as Utah by 61%. So we'll see. By the way, I know Ohio State fans are in two categories right now, either Ohio State uh, has no chance of getting into the playoffs and they don't deserve to, or, you know, Ohio State might be able to, and we'll, we'll talk about that in detail later, but. Um, yep. Yeah. Let's get through the game. The fact that we're, we're gonna, the fact that USC is so far down is, is to, to Utah in the predictor, maybe some pause for hope. All right, uh, going through the rest of these games, Alabama takes care of business against Auburn. Uh, Clemson losing to South Carolina. So that this eliminates Clemson's chance to potentially try to backdoor their way into the, the playoffs. And they had they had things going for them. They had Texas A&M losing, um, but, and then Oregon losing, which I'll say here next here, but, yeah, they they lose to the Gamecocks 31 to 30. Yeah. Um Clemson's then, been painfully average this year and South Carolina all of a sudden looks good. I mean, it's too late to do anything with that, but all of a sudden they look good. Yeah. And then the and then Oregon trying to get their way back into a playoff discussion, not happening now after they lose to Oregon state 38 to 34. Yeah. And I mean, Oregon was already out of the playoff discussion when they lost last week, but um, yeah, it's this, will, this, this will do it <laughs> again. Um, we said Ohio state needs a ton of help and they're Clemson, Oregon. Yeah. Um, LSU, Notre Dame, LSU. If Notre Dame had won, that certainly would have helped. But uh, here we are. All right. Uh, Tennessee wins big. Penn State wins big over Sparty. Kansas State, who will be playing TCU, um, win, wins by 20 over Kansas. Um, Washington wins big over Washington State. Utah wins big, who plays USC, against Colorado, big. Florida State uh, beats Florida 45-38, to 38, which Florida State, uh, kind of similar to like Notre Dame, wasn't all that great at the, the beginning of the year, but they Florida State's really coming on at the end of this year. Yeah, um, good, good, good for them. It's they're they're figuring it out. Um, you know, kind of, kind of like uh, FSU uh, may get a New York Six game or New York. I always do that. New Year Six game. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, the ACC is the ACC right now. What, what, what are they? What is the second best team here? Uh, Florida State or UNC? And if UNC uh, loses to Clemson uh, this weekend, that would put Florida State as the second best record so yeah yeah you're, and, and you, north you're, you're right. north carolina did also lose this week to north carolina <laughs> they did state lose in double they also lost yep to nc state in double over time 30 to 27 uh let's see and, and that and that further hurt clemson's chance too even if even if clemson won they would play it um, unc who lost and then if Clemson beat UNC again, and then they'd be unranked, Clemson would have like, I don't think they would have like anybody on their schedule who would, who would have been ranked. Yeah. <laughs> but either way, I digress there. Um, UCLA beats Cal 35 to 28 in a close one. Uh, Tulane beats uh, Cincinnati where where Coach Fick is now heading up to Wisconsin now, uh, 27 to 24. Uh, and just to finish up the rest of the games here, Ole Miss loses to Mississippi State, 22-24, but, but, but Lane Kiff is staying in Ole Miss, it, it appears. Uh, UCF beats South Florida uh, in a close one, 46-39. 
Texas beats Baylor, and Louisville loses to Kentucky to wrap up our top 25. All right, Kyle, let's uh let's get right into her. Let's get let's get the uh, tier list up. All right. It should be fun, shouldn't it? <clears throat> All right. All right. So let's start with let's start with the B tier here, Jared. I want to start with the B tier. I wish you to M. I will die on this hill. Absolutely not. They're a single <laughs> loss team. And by the way, and you can be like, oh, but they how they lost. That that's half the teams on this board right now. Yeah. Clemson, Clemson and Oregon down off of the B tier. LSU has three losses. Get them out of here. So now, yep. 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 So Al Alabama goes up to A. Ohio State goes down to A. I would move those all over, and I would put for, for week 13 here, I'd put USC up there. And if you want to, if we're going to put in order here, I'd part, I'd put Ohio state over Alabama right now as the last spot. Yeah. Kyle, if USC yes, loses mm -hmm. to Utah, are they in the playoffs? Yes. Yes. A tier should only be OSU. Austin says, I, I don't completely disagree with you, Austin. I, I don't, um, I don't either. Cause there's, there's, there's no way. Well, mm, there is a way <laughs> that Alabama can get in. And that's why I think they should I don't, stay in the A tier. I don't, think, I, I, I don't disagree. Think they should. I don't think they Kyle, should, but there is no. Okay. George is in no matter what happens. Michigan's in, in no matter what happens. TCU yep. is in no matter what happens. And I think mm. you may not agree with okay. me on that, but I think TCU is in no matter what happens. All right. Uh, Austin says TCU isn't in no matter what happens. Even if I... TCU and USC lose. But two of yes, USC, those, those, TCU, OSU but, is in no matter what happens. 100%. It's down to five teams. It's down to five teams. And two of those spots have been taken already. Georgia, Michigan. Exactly exactly what um, Kyle, Austin said there. Do you 100% do you 100 believe what you just said? That this is down to only five teams? Yes. Okay, then who, we should who, not. Who are, who are then then we should not have Bama. Then we should not have Bama in the A tier. Is, all, okay. is my only point. Okay. All right. So is there anybody else that should be there in the B tier? Purdue. Purdue could be a um a conference champion. Utah let's, could be a conference we'll put, champion. Let's, we're not putting Purdue in B tier, Kyle. Over my <laughs> dead fucking body. I will not disgrace B tier with, with Purdue. Um, I think we can move... We can Utah put, we up can there. Put Toledo there. Toledo could be. We're, a, we're not. We're not putting. Mac, Mac, stop Mac it. Champion. Stop it. Stop it. I know this is a bad take right now, but being a younger fan, born in 02, I've never seen this rivalry be overly competitive. So am I wrong for saying maybe we needed this to happen so we can come with more fire in the future? I was hoping that's what happened last year. Y yeah. Um. For the sake of the rivalry, yes, this is good for the rivalry. The rivalry has never felt more intense. That being said, fuck Michigan. I never want to see them win. Ever. And if that means downgrading the rivalry a tad, then downgrade the rivalry a tad. Because I hate Michigan more than I love the rivalry. And does that in turn make the rivalry great? I don't know. This isn't a philosophy class. <laughs> uh, but this does make the rivalry better. 
Yeah. If you want to call that a silver lining, if you want to say that I'm in the in the uh, negotiating phase of my mourning, you you can say that, and I'm not even going to tell you you're wrong. Mm -hmm. But so fuck Buckeye Michigan. A, so to go along with what we have here, Buckeye Matt has a question here. He says, "Surely we get in if USC or TCU loses, but what happens if they both lose? Do we still see two SEC teams?" and Big Ten teams in the college football playoff. If the committee stays true to what they have been doing, that would mean the rankings would be Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Alabama. Surely get in if USC or TCU lose, but what happens if they both lose? Do we see two SEC, two? I think TCU stays in. And the only way TCU is if, Thank you, Spikes. Spike says, unless TCU gets blown out. I I agree with that. Uh, Austin I, I says, agree. Michigan is in, Georgia is in. TCU is in if they win or USC loses. USC okay, well, is in with a win. OSU is okay, in if USC or TCU loses. Okay, all right. Let's, let's say- I, I think it has okay. to be USC. Okay, hold on. Let's say hypothetically here, TCU loses. Okay, let's just say they lose to Kansas State in the Big Twelve Championship. Okay, unless they get completely and, blown out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Twelve and one TCU, not a not a um, conference champion, and a ten and two Alabama. Okay, looking at the schedules here, for the wins here, Alabama ha would have exactly one, maybe two. We'll see where Mississippi State is won maybe two top 25 victories, and both of them barely in the top 25, okay? TCU has two as well. One, one sharing the same common opponent as Alabama, that being Texas, but they also have the one victory over uh, Kansas State, who then, and hypothetically here, loses in the conference championship too. So if you're comparing apples to apples here, it's pretty much the same. So I'd, I'd give the edge to TCU based on record then. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't, Florida see says, I, I don't see Alabama getting in at all here. Even, no. even if, even I, if TCU I, lost, but even if to echo lost, what um, Austin said, I don't even know why we're discussing it. Yeah. I fuck Bama. Um, Miami, uh, excuse me, Florida Buck says that was a shellacking at home. If we lost close, yeah, but that was embarrassing. If Ohio State had lost close, then I don't even know if they're not in the top four right now. Yes, I know route number 12, Austin, but they've let a two loss team in before. No, they so haven't. I thought they have. Did they no, not? No, sir. No, sir. There's never there's never been a two loss team make the playoffs. Okay, I stand corrected. I, I thought there was one. I thought it, that LSU. I think LSU had a real chance this year if they beat Georgia and didn't lose this week, but they did lose this week. I think they had a. I think they had a chance. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's down to it's down to. It's down to three teams for that final two spots. Yes. 100% then. I I really have a hard time seeing TC. And again, unless it's a total shellacking, I have a hard time see, seeing TCU not get it. And by the way, I the, do the, think that the committee, and this is why you watch football games, this is why you have people looking at it we do need to also acknowledge that like, uh, you know, does the committee really consider Ohio state losing as big as they lost? Um, because like a couple of those touchdowns were just some long plays at the end. Do they really see it as a 20 some point game? Do they, or don't they? I think that's a good question. Mm -hmm. They had two chunk plays at the end, very tight going into the fourth. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if uh, so Michigan were two and we were three, do we even drop out of the top four? Yes. Yes, we do. I think, 
I think if this is a close game, I think I, I don't think if it was like two versus three or three versus two would matter. Um, it was very tight going into the fourth. Um, I think Ohio State drops to number five no matter what happened, but then it 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 would have created like a so let's say let's say Ohio State loses by three points on a last second Michigan field goal. Let's say that was what happened. Ohio State still probably drops to fifth, but like then TCU has to win their game. And right now I'm not convinced they do have to lose their game. Mm-hmm. And maybe they're at number four and maybe in, in four or five, five or four. Um, but I think Ohio state has a much easier path into the playoff had they lost by, if they had lost like an overtime, right? Yeah. If they had lost an overtime. Sure. Because like, so you know, USC, you know, in the, 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 the USC apologists on the committee are like, hey, USC is only losses in overtime, right? Yeah. Then who is so, three? TC, wait a minute, in, in what scenario, Austin? You're missing a team. No, I'm not. I'm saying that I don't think USC would have jumped Ohio State. I'm saying it's possible. I don't know. So. Oh, you're not talking to me. Okay. So we're so worst worst case scenario for Ohio State. If well, best case for for Ohio State, USC loses, they're in. I think if USC loses, they're they're in. I agree. But that, but then the question is going to be, TCU loses, then you have one loss TCU and a one loss Ohio State. Neither one a conference champion. Then you, if you then compare schedules, I I think you got to give the edge to Ohio State because of their teams that they've played in their um, top 25 wins. TCU, TCU. TCU has a really nice resume of wins. If we're being honest. Um, well, that, that's, that's what I was just, what's going to, to hurt them. us have, is they, that they have, we lost by so much Sandman. I agree. Um, in the weeks leading up to the show, we had talked a lot about could Ohio state and Michigan both make the playoffs. Um, and I said that a close loss is could very easily make that happen. The question is, how does the committee see the Michigan Ohio State loss? Mm-hmm. Do they see it as a 10 point loss or do they see it as a 20 point loss? You know what I mean? But at the same time, they pulled away in what the last seven minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was a 23 point loss. I understand that that's what it was on the scoreboard, but like a couple of those touchdowns were just sort of poured on by some long plays at the end. Does the committee care about that? And I don't know. I'm not saying they shouldn't care about that. I'm not saying that. Garbage time after we gave up. Right. But do you get. Do you think you think you get points knocked off? Do you lose credibility for giving up? Yeah. And by then, at least, at least for what we saw seemed to like guys gave up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's either their validation to keep OSU out or it'll be neglected if they want to keep us in either way. Yeah. All right, so Clark Phillips could here? send Ohio State to the playoffs is a funny thing we thought would be happening in a different way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it would have been really nice to have him on the team right right about now. Um, he gets the game clinching pick guaranteed. I hope so. Yeah. All right. And uh, so to recap here, so in A tier, in order, we have Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and USC. It, Ohio State as the lone a tier, meaning that this is, these are the teams or the team that um, has a chance to make the playoffs. Then the B tier is um, good teams that can um, that can make spoils here. Um, that that's on the outside looking in, but can make some make some noise. And then the rest uh, of the yes, teams- spikes. That was the butthole game. Um, is Ohio. Uh, Ohio State has to go through Georgia, then Michigan, if they get in likely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
And Georgia is better Michigan. Georgia is just a better version of Michigan. And we, Kyle, Austin, the entire server, we all talked about how we think Ohio State's a better team than Michigan, but God, we really hate the way things match up. We really hate the matchup. Um, Georgia's a better version of Michigan. I don't, I don't know if Ohio State makes a lot of hay against Georgia either. Um, yep. But I think this, this is a really good Michigan team. And I think they actually match up really well against Georgia. I do think Georgia's the better team, but it doesn't mean that Michigan can't win one. Yep. Maybe if JSN and Trey are back. I mean, yeah. Who knows? I mean, there's, yeah. There's a there's a good there's a good month here. Got a good month to get healthy. By the way, how many how many Ohio State fans are deleting tweets if uh if Ohio State does make to the playoffs and then starts winning games. Oh God. How, how, po how, and, and right guys, we hit record, right, hold on, right hold on. We, we need to ask the chat. We need to ask the chat. Don't ask the chat, Kyle. All right, fine. I'll ask the chat. All right. With the loss here, guys. All right. You ready? You ready? If even with that big loss that happened this weekend, if Ohio State beats Georgia, Michigan beats um, TCU or USC, whoever they play, they meet each other in the in the national championship game, and Ohio State beats Michigan in the national championship game. Will this big loss just be swept under the rug, be all forgotten? People would be deleting tweets and all that. I hope they don't get deleted because I want the team. To, I don't want the team to forget. The, Sam, no, the tweets aren't going to help that. They, they'll remember. They'll remember. Mm -hmm. the, the tweets don't matter. Um, I still want him fired. <laughs> no, you, no, no way on. you believe that. Come Zero no, chance. You're, you're kidding. Yourself. Troll poster. You're He's kidding. a troll poster. He's such a troll. We all we become all be Utah fans this weekend. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's this instantly becomes like this instantly this becomes the Virginia Tech. Just the funny thing. The funny thing that happened on the way to the championship. Yeah. And Say TCU defeated Michigan or USC or whoever. Do we still. And Ohio State beats Georgia than TCU. Yeah. Um, how, how, how you mean I he's still he's still a national championship, right? You still have if, to. It's a fucking national if, championship. If that were to happen, Jared, if if that were to happen, by the Ohio way, State, I just want to say for the record, I don't think Ohio State in, in, can beat Ohio Georgia in Ohio State beats beats Michigan, the national title. Would that be the best win? In Ohio State history, then. No, I don't know the the Bama win in the first playoff is, is well, kind of huge. The best win in the rivalry. Let me clarify oh. that. The best win in the rivalry. Because, because nothing, it, it, this, I mean, it, it's literally game, a national that, that title. Game, that game, that game is for all the bragging rights. It's all for the, um, the national title. It, I mean, it's gotta yeah, be then. it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's literally for the national title. It's got to be. It's not for an opportunity at a national title. It is the national title. Yep. Uh, a lot of ifs, a lot of ifs, and um, chaos that needs to needs to happen. But we'll see. Team K Team Chaos is loved in November so far. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, man. Pac-12 title will be on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It always is, right? I can't take two oh, yeah. of yesterday's in one season. We weren't even discussing that as a possibility. Don't even, don't even, don't even bring that up. Yep. Don't even bring that yep. up. I don't Friday even want to night. think about it. I don't even want to think yep. about Friday it. Friday night on Fox. Yep. And we will cover that game. We'll cover that game on, um, if you're, if you come and join us on the Discord, discord.theswoopcast.com, and become a patron. 
you can listen to us on Wednesday as we record, and we will talk about all no, the uh, Austin. championship games. Austin asks, Jared, counter question. If he does, if, if Ryan Day loses to Michigan again in the playoffs, in this case, the national title game, do you fire him? And man, a lot of you said yes. <laughs> How are you going to fire a man for beating Georgia and going to the national title? You guys That's, are silly. That's why they're slip cats. <laughs> How, how are you going to punish a man for going to the national title game? That's that's cuckoo. That's cuckoo bananas. Yeah. By firing him. Duh. All right. I think I think that's it, Jared. Um, I know it's yeah. a lot shorter in terms of teams to talk about here, but I mean, we're, we're down to the wire here. We are done with the regular season here. Going to talk about uh, the conference championship games on our next episodes here. And then it's bowl season. What's going, I think we're just not doing a Thursday episode this week. Uh, or, or maybe, or maybe we'll, or maybe we'll release the, um, the Kraken? chaos or not collegiate chaos. The, um, our Oh yeah. Picks on Thursday. Yeah. We might just do the, yeah, we might just or or not. I don't know. We'll figure it out. If he loses next year's his job at risk. Yeah, no, he's done. Yes. Yes. He's he's done. If he if he loses again next year, he's done. I mean, in, yeah. unless you're telling me that's a scenario in which he also won the national title, in which case, no. National title buys you a lot of patience. Can we get an OSU basketball primer on Thursday? No, that that'll That'll have to come later. And I don't feel mentally prepared for which, that at the which moment. Speak it, which speaking of that, this Wednesday, Ohio State heading on over to Durham to take on Duke, which is kind of. No, Sandman, kind of, a, a, it's a kind national, of a national title buys you a lot of leeway. It's kind of deja vu because last year, Ohio State lost to Michigan and then played and beat Duke. Will we see that again this year? I hope so. I hope so too. But it it is in Duke here. So did they play at Duke yesterday last year? I can't remember. No, it, it was it was in at Ohio State, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like uh last week we spent all day, we spent like a, a I don't know, 40 minutes or more in this chart, but with only five teams, there's not a lot of scenarios to go over. No. Really, really, it's it's down to those five teams. Yeah, just like Jared said. So, we go Nothing back else. to this view. Y'all, y'all are seriously telling me that if Ryan Day wins the national championship this year but loses to Michigan next year, that they're going to fire him? Is that honestly what you're trying to tell me? Not, not you, Austin. Not you. Other people. Crazy, crazy bananas. Mm. Well, there it is, Jared. It is official now. Let me let me grab it real quick. Super double official. Fick. I assume he's talking about Fick. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good for him. I'm honestly surprised. I didn't think he'd take that job. Um. Six million. Is that all? It is a good job. I'm just, and I guess it's not, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy for him. I'm happy oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm happy lot, for him too. I, I know a lot of people, a lot of people are wanting Vic to come to Ohio state, but I, it's, it's tough because you look at like what he, what he did or didn't do when he had the chance to step up and try to get that, uh, that job and, and didn't. And again, he, he grew and become a better coach since then. But I mean, being a coach, being the head coach at Ohio State versus most other places, it's it's so so different. Uh, if Day loses to Michigan next year with no natty, Ohio State will take him from Wisconsin after one year. I would put my oh yeah, if the mothership calls, Fick goes home. If that's what Ohio State wants, 
If the mothership calls, he goes home. Um, I, they will not fire a day. If they are, are you talking about if they lose to Michigan again next year? Cause they might three, three in a row go one and three against Michigan. I, I'm, I feel like I'm fending off fans wanting to fire him as of now. And I'm trying to beat those people off with a stick. Um, I I can't imagine what would happen if he lost again next year. I don't think they care. I don't think they care as much. Care as much as some of us think about football. I, I don't know who the they is in that sentence. I'm saying the opinion of fans is different than, oh, yeah, 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 uh, exactly. Ohio fans are, pun, forgive the pun, very fickle. Um, they are reactionary. They are emotional. Um, way more so than not just the administration. I said no pun intended, Austin. Uh, <laughs> way more than the administration, way more than the players. I... I, I always love it after every loss. Everyone's like, and now all the recruits are going to dec. No, they're not. Players are not nearly as reactionary as fans are. Mm -hmm. They understand that sometimes yeah, you lose so football there, games. Yeah, so and, there's 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 a lot of talk going on right now, Jared, about oh, since 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 the game, since since Michigan beat Ohio State, there's been two two Ohio commits or two commits from the state of Ohio that's committed to Michigan and then trying to make it seem like, Oh, the world is falling and this and that N neither player had Ohio state offerings though. Yeah. Neither, they, neither, they, neither one did. And, and then you could argue maybe, maybe they should have. Um, hey guys, can would, I, they, they, can I they, offer they, a counter they'll, narrative they'll, they'll, they'll to that? The, they'll take the, they'll take the rivalry more serious than, than somebody who's down in Florida or Texas, guys, or California, wherever guys, can I, can I offer that maybe one, as Kyle said, those guys weren't like sought after. Well, the, the, Ohio state was not a realistic option for them for one reason or another. Can I toss out there that maybe this has more to do with Luke fickle not being in Cincinnati than it does with, oh, with uh, Michigan winning. Cincinnati has long been like the second option for a lot of Ohio kids. With Fickle not being there anymore, that means more Ohio kids are going to go play for Indiana, Michigan State and Michigan. Th those kids who didn't quite get enough looks from Ohio State where a lot of them were going to Cincinnati and more of those kids are going to go to Pitt. More of those kids are going to go to Michigan and Michigan State and Indiana and Wisconsin, Wisconsin. A lot of them are going to go to Wisconsin. There's going to be a lot of Ohio kids go to Wisconsin. We'll see. We'll see. Do we scout for more Ohio based players or stay with the national wide recruiting? You, you have to do both. And by the way, Ryan Day is coached, without... has coached the state of Ohio more than urban Meyer ever did. He already yeah. has. So, so here, here's the thing. I, I talked to a, a good buddy of mine um, on Sunday here and he was talking about, well, well we, we, we need to recruit more in, in state here. We need to, we need to keep the players in Ohio just like Trestle did. And I said, and you, you want to go back to the, the kind of recruit classes that Trestle had, especially towards the end of his tenure tenure. No, you you need to still recruit well, which he has been. He's been recruiting still really well in state, keeping top talent in in Ohio. And yeah, and yeah, once in a while he he does lose some to out of state or or wherever, but he's keeping the vast majority of. Those have almost all been offensive in, linemen, in and state. that's been corrected. Yes, <laughs> that has been. Yeah, <laughs> but no, he's he's get, keeping that talent in the state, and he's going elsewhere to get the top talent. I mean, yeah, I, I don't need to say more heartline and Johnson fine. than fine. day in your opinion. I'm sorry. Have you not seen the quarterbacks? Yeah. 
do you, do you really think that's Urban's son-in-law doing that? It's not. Because it's it's not Urban's son-in-law that's bringing in those quarterback recruits. Rayola's not coming to play for Urban's son-in-law. Ohio State has had significant issues recruiting corner and offensive line. Rayola needs to start in 2024, by the way. He might. I think it's a decent, I think it's a decent possibility that um, um, McCord is one and done. They've had issues rec recruiting corners. They've had issues recruiting offensive linemen. They've replaced both of those coaches and it takes a year to get the recruiting going as literally every recruiting expert has ever said. It takes, you know, recruiting is about relationships. Mm -hmm. You can't show up and be an amazing recruiter day one with rare exceptions. Rare exceptions. And some of you are like, Heartline, Heartline did it. Heartline did it. Heartline was a grad assistant at the university already. And while they're not supposed to talk to recruits, mm -hmm. be an adult about it. <laughs> be an adult about it. You know what really happens. Mm -hmm. I'd like more balanced classes. I'd take a few less wide receivers for a couple cornerbacks or offensive tackles. That's not how that works, though. This isn't a draft. You, you can't be like, well, let's spend some more first rounders here versus there. You just go get the best guys in the country. Yep. I mean, blue chip guys. That doesn't change. You can get. That doesn't change the equation at all. It's again, it's not a draft. You don't choose who you pick your first rounders on. Giving up an extra great wide receiver isn't going to get you an extra great offensive tackle. But yeah, I get what you mean. We can get both. You have to get both. Again, they've replaced the cornerbacks coach. They've replaced the offensive line coach. They're trying to remedy those situations. You can't win big games if you can't control the trenches 100%. Until you can uh, continuously recruit the O-line, you're going to continue to struggle in big games. Yeah. And by the way, I got bad news for y'all. That's not a problem that's going to be remedied next year. The offensive line isn't going to be magically better next year. Just because yeah. Fry's there. It takes time to recruit, especially offensive tackles. In fact, it may be worse. Yeah, it's going to be worse. Just, yeah, the offensive line is going to be worse next year. Paris and, yeah, Paris and Dwan are gone. Both lead tackles. Yes. I mean, the line's going to be worse next year. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. not going to be Fry's fault. Just tossing that out there. That's not going to be Fry's fault. In fact, it'll be a huge credit to him. Is anything going to be better? Um, the wide receivers will be better. Um, healthier. Because. Backs. <laughs> healthier yeah. Running back. Yeah, because you're not you're not losing. I mean, you're losing JSN, but you didn't have JSN. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll the, more about the wide yeah, receivers will be better. Jared, the running backs yeah, should be better. Just yeah, Jared and I did, were talking about talking about this a little bit here. No, definitely. McCord will not be used in an option yeah. more. No, we'll, we'll definitely. We'll definitely. CJ Stroud is athletic. Day just didn't want him taking hits, and I agree with Day. Do we have a shot in the shithole next year? Um, I don't know. It just depends. Oh, Ann Arbor. In Ar yeah, yeah. Uh, Michigan's losing a ton of players this year. Michigan's losing a ton of players this year. They will also be resetting. And... You guys talk about recruiting. Ohio State recruits better. Ohio State recruits better. Well, sometimes that doesn't matter when there's only 22 dudes on the field. They did not lose a lot last year. They lost a lot last year on the defense. They recovered fine. 
They didn't lose shit off of their offense, including that offensive line, which is what makes that team. Ben Chrisman will be an All-American next year. I, that's possible. Um, I, I wouldn't bet money on it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet money against it. Being an All-American stuff. They lost a lot last year on the defense. Their offensive line makes that team. That is one of the best offensive lines that I've seen in college football in a little bit. That's a tremendous offensive line Michigan has. Tremendous. How do you talk to recruits? We had out after the game yesterday. What do you say? Genuinely curious. Um, I, I do have information about that. I'll share that in our um, recruiting uh, channel here, St. Men. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's not a huge concern for me. Again, players, because I know we lost two already. Uh, not, not, not really. Um, the quarterback and the running back, the quarterback, um, that was a, and I need you to look at the screen. If you're not looking at the screen right now, Sandman or everyone watching, I need you to look at the screen right now. That was a mutual decision. A mutual decision. And read into that however you please. And by the way, whoever the 2023 quarterback is, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter. They'll bring in DJ Uyunglele and he can be our Jagger LaRue of the year. Because that's exactly all he would be. It's going to be McCord then Rayola for three. Probably. I That's what I would put my money on, Austin. We'll always have elite options at quarterback. No, we won't. That is such a new phenomenon. If not, it'll be Brown for one and Rayola for two. That would be difficult because Brown would only be. No, he'd be a third year player. He'd be a third year player. Um, yeah, I just I just messed up my math in my head. Don't worry about it. Um, is DJ actually coming? I don't think so. But if he does, he's not starting over McCord. Do you guys think Stroud is staying? Oh, no, he's done. He's he's going to the NFL. He's potentially a one one. He's he's a top five draft pick. He's gone. He's definitely not transferring. There's no reason for him to transfer. Mentally, he wants to beat Michigan. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not putting money on it. I think I think that's I think you're once again venturing into the bargaining territory of your morning. By saying, well, maybe you're bargaining. You're still in yeah. mourning and you're bargaining right now. You're trying, you're trying to put a silver lining on the Ohio State loss is what you're doing right now. He's seriously, he is poised. He is poised to be the first overall pick. And if not first overall, still a top five. You were saying, Kyle? So if you want to read more about the the recruiting, um, I posted posted some um, some things in the recruiting there. But I'll just in, in short, even though yeah, it it sucked that Ohio State lost, but in the grand scheme of the recruiting front, doesn't matter. It, it didn't it didn't hurt. Doesn't matter, guys. I already I already said it once. I'll say it one more time. Then we'll end the show. Only fans get this worked up over losses. Um, Only fans. Only fans, yes. Only fans, not the <laughs> sloopcast.com. Um, it's not a real thing, is it? It's not. But is it? Jared, what is your only fans? I just said it. Jared hasn't has you know, guys, we're moving this entire streaming operation to OnlyFans. Austin <laughs> won't let me move it to Twitch, so I'm gonna move it to OnlyFans. And uh you know, we'll see what happens. It's a little spicier over there. It's a little spicier yeah. over there. We'll see what happens. All right. You got anything else, Jared? 
Early prediction. I know there's not much to go off of right now. Where do we end up this time next year? Same place, playoffs. What's your thoughts? That is so dependent upon, first and foremost, the offensive line. That That's all I got. That's all I got right now is just to say it depends on the offensive line. I That is the biggest risk factor to me. The defense should be really good. Hopefully some of the cornerbacks who are young right now age into really good juniors uh, or they pick up someone in the transfer portal, something, because um, they need some help at corner. Um, but the linebacker should be really good next year. The defensive line should be really good next year. Safety should be really good next year. Um, I have all the faith in the world at Kyle McCord. Uh, you're not going to lose anyone at wide receiver who actually played this year. Um, mine Williams probably leaves, but, um, you'll have Hayden a year older. You'll have, um, Henderson a year older. Um, I think the off, I think the running backs will be in good shape. Um, Fleming needs to go to the NFL. Uh, Evan Pryor. Yes. Evan Pryor returning next year. We need to have that conversation. Uh, not today. We don't. Um, so I think the running backs will be in good shape. I think the wide receivers will be in excellent shape. Um, the defense, I think for the most part, except maybe a corner isn't going to be in really good shape. The offensive line scares the shit out of me. Um, so I think it really comes down to can the cornerbacks step up and can the offensive line reload? That's that's the biggest questions for next year, but we have all of season to talk about that. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, no, mention I already mentioned about Ohio State playing Duke on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, hopefully the Buckeyes can pull it off again this year. Yep, and Tuesday, and Tuesday, yes, yes, Tuesday, Tuesday. Team USA has got a must-win game against Iran to move on past the group stage. Uh, do you guys want to do a 2 p.m. social screen of the soccer game? Or do you I want know. to do... I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll do it, it's fine. Hell, I have a meeting, but I'll still put it on for everybody. Or, and th I'm just saying this is going to, just from a time investment standpoint, it is going to, no, 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 no. I'm saying this would replace Sloop Cats only. I'm not saying it would replace this weekend. Um, just from a time investment standpoint, those are your two choices and I'll, I'll let you guys choose. Well, we don't have to choose right now. We don't have to choose right now. In fact, we need to end the show. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by... Um, well, all the reason to have a social screen to listen to it. Um, the floor walkers, uh, once again, tonight's uh, show will be brought to you by the floor walkers. The name of this song is how far. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the floor walkers. <laughs>